Charles. So um, between uh, Marlene and Charles and Myrtle, they've been um, regurgitating the, the darker private club thing because it's that we get answers, we get questions about it the most. Yeah. And if you see the amount of web form, like automatic responder things that I get in my inbox that says Charles dealing with, <laughs> it's running at around about 300 a week, maybe, Charles, at the moment. Maybe more now. The yeah, they from all directions and also on the phone, you know, uh, we're trying to standardize our responses as well and lead people to our FAQ because there's so many questions and we categorize them all and then put them all, put all the answers there for everyone to see. But you still get, you still get people saying, yeah, I read the FAQ, but. But, yes. <laughs> yeah, and then they still ask us one of the questions in the FAQ. <laughs> yeah, I know. Different words, then it's going to get a different answer, <laughs> but the answer always stays the same. It doesn't matter how you put the question. Control yeah. C, Control V. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And the number one of the one of the questions of questions at the moment, Marlene, is how do I get into making a DACA private club? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the one that we wish we could get paid for, because then. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Tony at Hemporium, um, he monetized his brain a bit a while ago, and you wouldn't believe how few requests he gets now, because <laughs> like he wanted, it. bro, I want to start a hemp farm. Like what? What? He said, "Well, I tell you what, I, I've got this pack." That you can read, and if you need to see me, it's X amount an hour. So maybe that's how it is now, Marlene. Yeah, it should be. You, yeah. you and Charles yeah. are the ones doing it by <laughs> DPC uh, consultants. Yeah, there you go. Charles, what <laughs> what is the number one? What how how do you explain it in like? I think you wrote a paragraph of 60, 80 words about how it is. How do you describe a DACA, DACA private club in a tweet? In a tweet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, it takes the production cycle of the cannabis industry and, you know, it incorporates it into a, a, a private, the, the, for the whole thing to function in a private way. So we don't advertise and you don't try and grow too quickly, you know, it's there to serve the community. And it's not a business, that's the, the most important thing to remember, that it's there to serve cannabis culture and to preserve the culture and not to make money. If you want to make money, then maybe... Um, there's something else you can do, but a private club is not there to make money. Um, but it, uh, it, it can support itself through making money, but it's profit is not the the main aim. Right, right. And it, and but presumably a club has to make some money because there's everything to pay. You know. There's yeah, look, because you'll still be a business. Yeah. It, you will register as an NPO or an NPC, and you will still be a business. And a business has functions that need that right. need to be performed by people. Mm -hmm. And those people need to get paid a salary. So it's completely acceptable to have people work for a salary. But you're not going to come at the end of the year and hand out bonuses to everyone. And, and it's a, a great big party. There's no right? Ferraris. Half a kilo or something. Is yeah, yeah. No, it's, yeah. Leftover because crumbs. Because the, the, the basis of it is still non-profit. So whatever money you make, you okay. either reinvest yeah. back into that back in. club, yeah. your community, to further that community, or then pay the, salaries. <laughs> pay pay salaries. salaries. But the profit that you make, then you can also use for the social responsibility aspect that we brought in, which is basically contributing to a good cause to show the community and the society as a whole that listen, stoners are not a lazy bunch of fuckers that <laughs> sit at home and do nothing and we don't contribute to the community. We are productive members of society, we perform functions, we are co people that are contributing. Yeah. Right. So we need to lift that stigma and the Daha Private Club concept is the perfect way to do that. Yeah. So how, how many clubs are you a member of so far? Am I a member mm. of? I'm a member of two clubs. I'm a member of four. One in Cape Town, three three here. Nice. Okay. What are you? How are you doing? Uh, three. Three, cool. Four, yeah. Four. Okay, two. Dark horse. He would nobody would know. Yeah. He wouldn't want to be a member of any. He wouldn't want to be a member of any club that would accept him. Deep down inside, <laughs> deep down inside, he's the member of most. <laughs> of the most. I'm a member of two. And Charles, how are you doing? Well, I know that you and I have met uh, on occasion at Betty Boop in Cape Town. So you have got a membership there. You've got the. Yeah, got you've got uh, what do you call got it? The joint. Hmm? The joint up in Harabeersport. The, the joint. So you're, you're, yeah, you're on two as well, yeah? Jazz farm and yeah, there's at least three or four. Three. I, I don't always remember them all because I, 
I haven't been traveling much, but yeah, the some are in Joburg and some are in Cape Town. <laughs> and they're kind of different, most of them. They're the same but different. Oh, same sorry, different. I'm a, I'm, I remember another one now that's really different. I've got there's a, one I'm a member of a very high end, beautiful, beautiful space in Cape Town that I've only been to once on the opening night. So, I've, okay. I've, but I never went. Alibi. <gasps> Shh, the A word. Yeah, find it, find it if you can. Yeah. yeah. Yes, is that the whole thing about these places downtown? You don't know where they are. But that's a good thing. Oh, no, it's a totally private. specific private. requirements. Yeah. It has to be like that. Yes. Yeah. There's like yeah. a little blue line. Little secret I... doors in the pet in the alleyways type thing. No, um, one in particular, they said the little blue light. Wow, well, fuck, it must be a little blue light. Eh? <laughs> very, very, very little. And there was a little blue light. No, but that's another one of the questions that I think Charles also getting hot full for. Is like, uh, I live in the Eastern Cape. Where can I find a club? Like, dude, it's private. We're not going to tell you. You've got to um, ask around. But, but Get a recommendation. How do they find Good it? Amount. Good how amount, private dude. is private, though? Like, shouldn't there be, like, some degree of directory to say that they exist and where you can find them? How do they interact with the public? Or should it only be a word of mouth? Yeah. It's like swingers clubs. That's How do you find out? <laughs> they don't go around advertising swingers I think clubs. And it's ironic, you know, it's ironic that he should... Club, club. They know. They'll find them. <laughs> <laughs> it's ironic that he should compare it to a swingers club because Charles always says, compare the, the club thing to sex. Like, everyone knows Some it's happening. Adults. But, yeah. like, uh, no one has to see. <laughs> Charles got the last word in the interview with that one. That yeah, was so funny. That was awesome. <laughs> oh, that was so awesome, Charlie. You got the line. I can't remember, even remember what was what was the article in the. Well, Ducker Private Clubs is Cape like time. sex, <laughs> like sex. It's a consenting adults in a. Yeah, in a private space. Oh, uh, swingers house. Yeah. Winlows. Yeah. Um. So, Charlie, apart from, uh, can is there is there like a self service portal or uh, is there something that people have to go through to get to the point where. They open their doors with a form of club, association, membership portal, committee, yeah, there's, stock there's some basics whatever. that you have to adhere to, but, but, but the model is quite adaptable. And I mean, it, it, it can be part of like a restaurant, like at the joint, or it can be completely private. Like um, there's a few of the clubs in Cape Town that are like on the second or third floor of a building. And you just can't see from the street that there's anything. Right. Unless you know which door it is to knock on. So, you know, there's no advertising, so you don't have to have a sign-up or anything. All the beauty is on the inside. You think, mm -hmm. um, you know, the ethos of this is to get round the laws to make it possible. It's like a science, it's a social science experiment mm -hmm. to prove we're not fucking axe murderers and we can all congregate and smoke weed. Yeah. That's what we want to do. Yeah. We just need a drug consumption <clears throat> room. That's all it fucking yeah. is. Yeah. And the dealer behind yeah, the counter... It's Who's dealing the weed? Not a complete experiment. The money and the weed, you know, it's like experiment. Dealer. He's not a dealer. He's providing a community service because that's yeah. how we describe it. Yeah, yeah. He's the bartender at the bar. The bud tender. Why dude. is that okay? But a bud tender. Right. So that's, that's kind of what we're, we're aiming at. So the bottom yeah. line is, Charles, don't you think one day when it's like permissible, it would be fucking cool to have a big sign outside the Betty Boop going, "Get your fucking weed here." Yeah. yeah. Big ganjali flashing. Big ganj flashing ganjali like ding 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 with like red eyes on it. Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so the Dhaka Private Clubs is the Sp is a Spanish idea to get round their weird laws that they can't have retail either, and they've been left alone for years. So we're we're yeah. presuming that that's the next thing here. That's kind of the ethos of it. Yes. All of the all the, the thing files is in the, the, the clubs the aren't surprise. Say again. You see, the clubs aren't surprised. People people expect it. Um, when decriminalization came in, that we would see something like along the lines of a bar. You know, there'd be bars everywhere, but cannabis bars. And now there's this club concept, which is different because it's it's not advertising and it doesn't have signage on the street. Yeah. So it's a new thing for people to get their heads around. But the more I look at it and the more that I read the documentation about the clubs, the more beautiful it becomes because it really is there to preserve us. Mm. It preserves the culture and it's there for social reasons. And, and, and it's much more beautiful than just having something on the street that, that all the public can have access to. There's, there's I would hate that. Oh, wow, no, troublemakers just coming in yeah. through the door yeah. and all that shit that you have with a, a, a pub. Mm, I would yeah. hate that, just random strangers being able to walk in and just 
bust um, up on your flow and be and drunk and do it. Like an idiot in your space where you, where you want to have that private space. He gets he drives away and he crashes into some kid. And then it's our fault. The last place he left was this place. It's the Dachau police. But he was drunk when he got there. You know, when we had Kubis on Zoom during the lockdown, um, he said there was like three and a half thousand members nationwide. I don't know whether I heard it wrong. Okay. Uh, definitely, of course. Why, why, why is it even a... I can so, of course, right. I can expect yeah. more. Okay, so now that, is like, now that is like a little bit too... Two times removed from your friend, you know? Mm. Your friend plus your friend, maybe, yeah. mm. is like your inner sanctum. Mm. But apart, yeah. and then you go three times. Oh, I've just brought my mate. Who's brought his mate? Then that guy is. Yeah. Who the fuck are you, bro? Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you've got to keep it insular. But he isn't. He's a businessman, and he's using it as a model to be a business. Yeah, he's running a different yeah. kind of. Oh, he's, he's very he's different. Yeah. There's he's another kind of. He's running out. Yeah, there you can come in off the street and sign up. You can other come, private clubs. You have you to know it's a recommendation driving. with someone that's been that that is there that that yeah. says. I know this club. Give him a key. Um, you go to the owner, you say, well, you go to them and say, Kevin, I think if there's something, you just have to ask them. Or if so, you have to be there when the introduction is done yeah, so right. they know, okay, this person referred mm -hmm. this person, so there's a lead back. Always um, back. Yeah. Good, Actually, good, good Myrtle referred me. She got the invite in Cape Town as the MD. Yeah, see, there we go. So and then she brought me along to <laughs> sign up. I've proven the ID. Oh, I brought, him, I brought the token with me. <laughs> the knob. I brought the knob. <laughs> Why is it a way lady? Lady says evening all. A uh, Cindy Glamini says I started smoking weed in my mother's tummy. Yeah. Oh, I think Way. some of us were like that. Uh, nice. Boom. But yeah, it's very interesting. Everyone's interpreting the private space their own way. But essentially what it boils down to is it's like this private discreet thing it would be nice if, if they could maybe have more of a public online presence for these clubs and that's still a private sign up or whatever because i'm also finding what's lovely about these clubs is they're still in this this moonshine phase like you get this honey honeymoon phase yeah. there's this moonshine phase where there's this lack of thing about finding the little blue light or the secret <laughs> door or going through some narrow c corridor and then bam hits the central <laughs> fairy lights everywhere and dance i love this <laughs> when I was in England and looking for a weed club, I remember we were we were sent to this particular location and it said it's here. And we circled this block twice, three times, we were about to leave and there was just something that I was like, No, we have to keep trying again. So we rang every doorbell along this fucking thing. <laughs> and we rang the one doorbell and walked past it and the door popped open and this lady stuck her head out. She's like, You here for the club? <laughs> Yes. yes. You were like, yeah, man. I, was, I could not <laughs> believe it that we'd walk past this window and everything. We couldn't hear anything, we couldn't see anything, and we couldn't smell anything at all. But when you walk inside, the first thing that we saw, which was pretty cool, the first sign that you see, loose lips sink ships. So oh, that is nice. the most solid saying ever, and I've always yeah. believed yeah. it. And as I walked in, you go inside and you open the door, and as you open that door, it's like walking into a coffee shop in Amsterdam. That smell, that atmosphere, yeah, everything hits you in the face, and you're like, Oh, I'm, I'm, home. Home. I'm home. I'm home. I'm like, this is where I want to be. Thank you. Cheers, where nice. everybody knows your name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So same Familiar. Thing. Everyone's yeah. cool. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. iry. Yeah. There's nothing. It's rad. And I'm every sorry. two days, there's some oak there with a delivery van delivering the new carbon scrubbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they run that monsters running inside there. Yeah, well, that would nice. fall under the running costs of running a club, yeah? Exactly. Well, That's yeah, a there business is that operational cost. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can have them off. Uh, cool, so guys, uh, please remember hashtag hotbox show uh, to enter on Instagram. Uh, this week's poll is it are you more worried about quantity or quality? Uh, guys, Dacha private clubs are trending hard at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Marlene and them are doing a great job, Shaw doing a great job, uh, Fields of Green doing a great job with, can, can, uh, with Cannabis Can Help South Africa. Uh, is there anything more we need to know about clubs? That's the show, it's the Fields of Green for All website. Charles, have you got your preferred method of being contacted? Because it all comes your way, really. Yeah, well, on our website, under the About section, there's a contact form, and that's the best way to reach out to us. And there's probably mm -hmm. 20 people did it today. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. So it's like <laughs> cooking with stuff. But I'm, I'm now buffered a bit. There's like a whole bunch of angels and stuff around going. They're on different sections. It's because it's too overwhelming. Yeah, it's become it's, a, it's, a real it's, thing. It's, it's, uh, yeah. The fucking inbox is like... It's a machine right. now. It's working. Yeah. And cooking, it's running. Cooking, cooking, yeah. yeah. Um, and big up to um, web developer... <clears throat> 
Indigo girl, Robin. No, okay. She's been superstar awesome. right on it all the yeah. time. A phone call away. Fuck! <laughs> yeah. Ah! And no. I've been seeing the backward and forward between Charles and, um, and uh, uh, Indigo. And it's so funny, the backwards and forwards between the... It's not right. And the, the, the pixels and the this, getting it all sorted out. <laughs> And um, I sent her a message in the background the other day, Charles, on, an, on WhatsApp and not Telegram, and said, you must be pulling your hair out by now. <laughs> <laughs> so they've worked really hard. You see there on the thread now that there's all of the, um, the blog posts that have been going out with a rehash of reminders of what mm. this is, how it is, over the years, how it's morphed and developed. And um, there's the big picture. The website's absolutely cooking and it's as busy as all hell at the moment. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, Charles. I love the background tonight. It looks yeah. like one of your favorite t shirts. It does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's called the musk. It's one of my favorite patterns. Cool. Um, stick around. We, we, uh, thanks for talking to us on, field, uh, on uh, Hotbox Show tonight. Marlene, anything to add? Yes, so the last thing... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, second last thing, because I'm going to still have some yeah. of Suresh's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we released a document this week that we're very excited about on guidelines of how you can start your own club. So the, the planning phase of what do you need to consider, what do you need to keep in mind to still operate within the integrity of the model. Because we are scared of people just going off on their own and interpreting this thing in and different ways, a bad name. And, yeah, and 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 basically, yeah, bringing all of us down with it. You know, the, the ones that are trying to do it correctly. So um, we released a document to the Green Network. So if you want access to it, you need to become a Green Network member. Only um, forty nine rand a month. Only forty nine rand a month, and you will also be supporting the whole legalization campaign. Basically, keeping the lights on and paying every everyone and you know, internet and data and everything and everything and all the things. Okay, so the document gives you guidelines on steps that you need to follow and things that you need to keep in mind so that you still operate within the integrity of the model. Uh, it's a basic guideline, it's not complicated, it's in layman's terms, it's very easy to understand. And if you are a Green Network member, you can also chat to me about whatever struggles you are having or problems you're experiencing and I will try at my best to advise you mm -hmm. because we also have some awesome legal wise members there on the Green Network yeah. that are also very yeah. willing to help us out that we're very grateful for. Because part of the Green Network is, is having access to our Green Network Telegram group as well. Yes, for and things are cooking <coughs> there. Yes. Um, yeah. Nobody's had a single issue with any club that we have we know of in any form. There's been no closures that we've had. There might no. be... There might be a, a, a court, you might end up in court on Monday or something, but it's explained away and the, and the people start backing off when they see the literature and yeah. how it is. They know there's more to it than, hang on a minute, there's like, there's, you see, there's no fucking money. It's not a drug yes, deal. That's the, thing. the money's the thing. No they dealing. see fucking 20k in this lot, they go, whoa! Yeah. But there isn't anything, it's just like the smell of it in here. Yeah. It yeah. smells like a fucking club yeah. in here now. Yeah. I wouldn't come to a club with aircon yes. like this, but no way would I go. No way. No, I need ten times more aircon than this. So, yeah. um, as Charles says, fieldsofgreenforall.org, ZA, there's a contact sheet, there's a drop down with what do you need to know or what do you want to know about, and um, you'll get directed around this very slick machine now that will put you on hold. Dial 6969 if you're bipolar. <laughs> if you're paranoid, the mother ship will pick you up shortly. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, something like that. We're working towards it. Cool. Thanks, yeah. Charles. You're welcome. Leonard van der Merwe is baked. Nice. Chris Calder mm. is late, but he says hi. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, Chris. Well, that's the beauty of all the snippets during Isn't the week. Just... You miss nothing. Yeah, the snippets are great. The snippets are... Oaks are watching that shit, right? Oh. Nice. Oh, you know what I meant to tell you? Do you watch Quick QI? Yeah. You a QI fan? Mm -hmm. uh, I watch a lot of QI because it's really English. Yeah, it's and like Jackie Paper Factory. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now they've got a, they've got a YouTube <laughs> channel that's yeah. like full of the questions. They've got the snippets of those. Oh, they're cool. Mindless stuff. Maybe they've been watching us and they learnt a thing or two. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Breaking uh, boundaries all over the world. So guys, please remember to vote in this week's poll. Uh, what do you value more, quality or quantity? Uh, basically, if you're on a desert island, would you rather have 
10 years of cuckweed or one year mm. of dankweed? Please remember, hashtag Hotbox Show on Instagram. Stand a chance to win some dank shit. Mm -hmm. uh, th should we get onto some CB 